This is my PFSense firewall. It kind of just runs in the background and I almost never think about it. But then I think back a couple of years when I built the thing and remember all the good times I had getting it all set up. We're gonna build in this moment of truth. It was my best friend. We were two fish in a barrel, two peas in a pod. We were just like this. And I would be a terrible friend if I just let it sit in that rack and collect dust for two years without any kind of upgrade. So uh, let's start making some amends. Didn't realize I had this, the video script up behind me just like that. Now it's my lovely, lovely wallpaper that you all know and love. Yeah, I know you do. In today's video, we're going to be making amends to my dear, dear old friend, starting with a new pair of shoes, a new backpack, and a little upgrade for his house. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Building a PFSense Router Part 2. Enjoy. First things first, if you're here, you might have already heard of PFSense, but if you haven't, I'll break it down for you real quick. PFSense is a free open source firewall and router that is entirely managed via web interface. Yes, I'm reading that directly from the website, but you don't care about that. The value that I get from PFSense is that I can do really cool things. I can physically separate my subnets. I can run open source security software. I can run open source uh, ad blocking software. I know I've said this in other videos, but I absolutely detest the idea of IoT devices scanning my network. And of course, yes, some devices on your home network will do that kind of stuff for functionality. Like for example, uh, your Amazon cell wants to connect to, I don't know, uh, maybe an LED light strip that you have that's an IoT light strip. They gotta do that, that's all well and good. I probably, their firmware is probably pretty fine and pretty secure, but let me, t let me ask you, is the firmware of that chintzy light strip or the, the weird, I, I have no idea what you IoT devices you buy, do you really trust that their firmware is secure? Do you really trust that they're gonna do binary authorization? Do you really think they're gonna check the, the SHA checksum of the boot image? Do you think they're gonna do that? No. And I know I'm a little crazy when it comes to network security, but the point of that whole tangent was that PFSense lets me do that, and it lets me do that fairly easily too. So let's move on with the upgrade. I think we need to start with the backpack. <laughs> I haven't looked in this thing in a while. Let me get you a closer look. So everything going on with this router right here is exactly the same as it was when I first built it in that original video. Hey, it's Editor Thomas. I actually lied to you there. I did replace the power supply. It used to be this the old PV, I think, power supply that was like really cheap. Now it's a Silverstone Flex ATX power supply, 350 watts, 80 plus gold. It's good, it's not gonna catch on fire. Don't worry, comment section, I got you. Don't worry. It's got these two hard drives, these two and a half inch hard drives here that I ripped out of old laptops. And for laptops to have been using spinning drives like these kinds, they must have been super old. Now I will mention that I have two of these drives here because they're set up in a RAID 1 ZFS pool. Because PFSense is a distribution of FreeBSD, there's built-in ZFS support, meaning that it's very easy to, upon installation, just mirror your drives and do other kind of configurations like that. So we're gonna be replacing these two drives with these two Kingston 240 gigabyte, oh my God, that's such a, there you go. These Kingston 240 gigabyte SSDs. So I don't do much packet capturing or logging or anything like that. So 240 gigs in a RAID 1 ZFS pool is perfect for me. Okay. Instead of bringing out, you know, a lighter monitor, I thought it'd be fun to uh, dust off my old red CRT monitor. Oh yeah. You ready? Listen, listen carefully. This is so cool. Oh, I love that so much. All right. 
We're gonna get booted up and uh, I'm gonna download the configuration file for this system. It just occurred to me that I'm gonna need to actually look at this screen while I do this. All right. Yeah, look at that. That's so, that's so, ah, that's so cool. I love, oh my God. I'm also gonna get my vacuum cleaner cause it's, uh, it's not looking pretty in there. All right, we've made it into PFSense, so I'm gonna start trying things. I kind of know generally what I need to do. Okay, let's just try to read the config, which should be at uh, CF. Oh. Ah, uh -huh. so that's cool. That is our configuration XML document. Now I want to figure out where the USB is and then mount it. Yeah. Config.xml, and we're going to pipe that into use cat to see if conf. Now I'm going to read it, make sure that it copied over correctly. Awesome. All right. All right. I'll make sure that that copied over correctly, and I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> I'm reading it from the USB. Here's the XML configuration file. There's some sensitive uh, encryption keys that I'm blocking with my hand. I'm too lazy to edit them out, so you're gonna have to just <laughs> go with it. <laughs> but we've got it. So it's fairly dusty in there. So before I uh, replace the backpack of the server, I'm gonna try and pull things out and get it all dusted. Almost sneezed. That's <laughs> the, the dust in the air is palpable. All right, let's get started. These screws are stripped. All right, well that wasn't as simple as I thought it was gonna be, but uh, everything's good. I took the whole thing apart to clean it. I've got the new SSDs in here. Everything's been cleaned well. Um, so now it's time for the most controversial part of the video. So listen, I read all of your guys' comments and so many of them on this PFSense video were about the cable management or lack thereof. And you know, I, I tried, I tried, but uh, yeah. Trust me when I say I get your frustration. I really do. I think you should do your homework and watch the video here I made about fan fluid dynamics because I think you'll be really surprised. Airflow, static pressure, and obstructions in the case don't really interact the way that you think they might. And Linus Tech Tips has a video from about six years ago where uh, I think Luke explores this topic even fun. further and just starts throwing stuff That's in a okay. computer case that really has That's no effect right. on the cooling performance whatsoever. Now we're rocking. Of course, if you can manage your cables better, then you should. But in this case, we don't have, as you can see, we don't have a lot of room to play with and I have to just do the best that I can with what I've got. These 40 millimeter fans that I have here actually moved quite a bit of air and they're small, but that does actually help them. The blade spins super fast and while there isn't a whole lot of surface area here to move air with, the static pressure that it creates is much higher than a large fan. I mean, think about it. You have more surface area, there's more ways, there's, there's more opportunity for air to go from the exhaust side back through to the intake side. With small fans like these, these blades move incredibly fast and that air has a really hard time trying to go back through. And what that means is they produce quite a bit of static pressure, but, but I still, I still want to have some fun. I'm here to make the viewers happy, but most importantly, I'm here to make myself happy too. And nothing makes me happier than spending unreasonable amounts of money on computer fans. <laughs> Take a look at the examples of that. I'm a fan of fans themselves, and I have been for quite some time. This monster of a server fan was my birthday present when I was 11. Psych, my obsession's unhealthy. You can't stop me. I bought it. I went and I got it. Oh, $100. I got it. It's mine. It's the power of a counter rotating. Thank God. Ugh. And now I have two more. These are Delta TFA 0412CNs. 12 volt fans, they draw, uh, they draw 800 milliamps each, which, oh, I don't wanna do that math. 
eight or nine watts probably. So they're, they're a little beefy. Blades spin at 12. 1,500 RPM, if I remember correctly from the data sheet. I'll put it actual, the actual correct number here. And I have played around with these a little bit, and let me tell you, they're pretty loud, but I want to address that. I know this is a polarizing topic, and there's plenty of people out there that don't want to hear their computer fans at all, and I totally get that. Go with Noctua if that's your, if that's your goal. But me, I like the sound. The white noise generated by computer fans like these and all of the ones I've got in the apartment, they help me tune out the demons in my soul and they quiet down the voices in my head. So if I don't have fans and it's just silence all the time, I don't know what I'll, I don't know. So I'm giving my dear old friend here a new pair of shoes so he can run faster and cooler than ever. But before I do that, I want to have some fun. All right, here's the premise. One pushes, one pulls. I have this trash bag here, it's completely sealed. This fan is gonna fill the bag, and this fan is going to drain the bag. This fan wins if this fan can't drain the bag. This fan wins if the bag starts deflating. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I haven't tested this yet, so uh, let's go. Start filling up the bag, woo! <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. It has occurred to me that these probably are not secured enough. I'm gonna fix that. Let's try that again. Okay. There you go. Now, uh, let's see how you do, other fan. I'm gonna be ready to turn this off any, any moment. Oh, it's working. So the exhausting fan takes it. <laughs> All right, it's done. And I was a little bit of an idiot and didn't actually flash a USB drive with the operating system image before disconnecting the Wi-Fi. But luckily I still had the file on my computer and didn't have to use something like a hotspot to get it. So awesome. Now I've got to go and install it. Now that sounds like a server. <laughs> oh yeah, shoot. All right, actually it looks like at this point I can recover a config, so I'm gonna do that, install. I'm gonna try that again. Oh no. <laughs> it looks like it's defaulted to the Windows shit. That's not good. you're meeting the uh, uh, gym rat version of Thomas computes today. <laughs> All right, so PFSense has been upgraded with, for the most part, no complications except for, well, I tried to, uh, I tried to restore the configuration from the XML file and I tried to restore everything and I don't really know exactly what happened, but uh, when I did that, I couldn't find the bootloader and I couldn't find the kernel for the operating system image. So it just did not boot up. So what I ended up doing was a completely fresh install. And then I imported only the important things like my static mappings, my firewall rules, just that kind of stuff that kind of takes a while to set up on its own. And yeah, it's working. I uh, 
I have Wi-Fi now. I know you can't see, but trust me, the Wi-Fi is on. It's very, very nice. Anyways, the last part of the upgrade is to upgrade my friend's house with this. So this is one of these kind of keystone jack thing. Let me see if I can get one out of here. Nope. Okay, I guess, so they're either glued in there, <laughs> fixed in there somehow, or I need to hit the gym more. <laughs> the most important thing on the back here is that they're also keystone jacks. So that means I can take the wires that go into the cabinet and I can actually terminate them with an RJ45 connector and then just boop, and then it's done. I don't have to, I don't have to punch down wires that takes forever and creates a lot of waste. So very, very cool. Let's go and do that. One of the things that I hate most about doing all of this tech stuff is uh, making network cables and terminating ethernet. This took almost two hours and it was like six cables. I just, I guess I'm like out of practice, but anyways, there you go, it works. All right, everybody. So checking back in with the web UI, everything's looking fantastic. The temps are good. The noise level's not too bad. I have all of my graphs back up. Everything's looking great. Uh, I also did an up, up, uh, uh, upgraded to 2.6, so it's far more stable than it has ever been before, and it's really exciting. So as it turns out, the, uh, hold on, the TFA0412CN is way too loud, and I, I tried sleeping with them on and it just did not work out. So for a while I reverted to the old fans, but I went ahead and just kind of found a middle ground with these here. This is uh, here. I got a pair of these two AFB 0412 VHAs and they are a perfect noise level for me. Oh God. <laughs> They're loud enough that I can kind of hear them whining in the background, but it's like that nice. It's a good, it's like a good whine. I was wrong. I thought I could handle a lot of fan noise, but this was like, you know, hearing damage level loud. So that's not great. But yeah, I wanted to make this update just because I would be, I would probably sound stupid if I just like left those fans in there and, you know, made it seem like I was whittling away at my eardrums little by little. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to stick around because I've got so much more coming for you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.